Some people do a deep dive, we're doing an unreal deep dive. Skadoosh! Welcome back to AzArt with Nick and John. We post three videos a week. Hit that subscribe button to stay updated. And if you ring the bell, you'll get notified whenever we post. And if you need links to our podcast or all the other cool stuff we're doing on our website, check out azart.space. John, cool. they're able to use a reflective helmet on a green screen or screen room now without yeah. having to remove the green. <laughs> We've known about the Mandalorian using the virtual production and the LED screens and things like that, the screen walls, like basically a whole set just built of screens for a while now. But one of my students actually had posted on Facebook and he goes, because so one of the classes that I taught was a traditional special effects and trying to do things on set and try and capture as much as you can in camera. And it was one of my favorite classes to, to teach because it was hands-on more tangible mm -hmm. and uh he said dude have you seen the new episode on disney plus they they you know dug deeper into the whole virtual production i said no i haven't and so i hopped on and then i told nick about it and we're like oh this is really fun we've talked about it a little before if you want to yeah. see our earlier episode it's it's been well documented it's kind of the poster child for unreal and uh, unreal game engine being mm -hmm. used in film mm -hmm. and this is not the first time things like this has happened to this extent it's a very very big step forward but uh it was very interesting some of the insights you got from the people and it's only like 20 30 minutes it's not super long but the amount of insight you got during that period of time was really fun so nick uh, what are some things that popped out to you and then i'll talk about some of the things that popped out for me because I, I i had some fun takeaways from different people well the one i thought <clears throat> was so cool was how it changes for the actors now right and like yeah e e uh -huh. even even for the directors uh Ta taka wakiti the director for thor ragnarok jojo rabbit and stuff he said there was a couple times where he even forgot he was like on a set because like they did the yeah. foreground and it blends into the background that you and then use this kind of like a trick of you know of the eyes where you just kind of feel like you're there you have time for your magic tricks illusions dad you don't have time for my illusion and, yeah and then um, the actor Carl Weathers, Apollo Creed from Rocky. Yes, yes. Apollo Creed. He, I think and, he said one of my favorite and happy nuggets. Gilmore. <laughs> I think he said one of my favorite nuggets from the from the behind the scenes look yes, was like. Yeah, so yeah. every actor, you know, when they when they're like, okay, imagine a dragon's in front of you, or imagine mm, yeah. you know the the world's <laughs> getting getting destroyed, or or by, you know what, whatever they yeah. have them imagining. Everyone, I'm gonna have a different thought than you of what that looks yeah. like or what yeah. color the dragon yeah. is or the scales, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because you have to come up with, the, even if you have something in your head, the action, you know, it's all going on in your mm -hmm. head, right? But being able to see it physically and all the actors being able to be on the same page with you, what they yeah. see. Yeah. Oh, dude, he's talking about the lava sequence. And he said, like, basically mm -hmm. the background's moving and the ton the tunnel's actually growing with them yeah. too and everything. Yeah. Where he was just like, dude, it felt like I was really on this thing. and. And I, I thought it was real, a really cool point because, yeah, obviously it's going to be more interactive for the actors and actresses. But at the same time, what he said holds true. And I think, you know, obviously they read screenplays and they get direction from the directors and things like that. But if, you know, you read a book and you talk to your friend about reading the book, you're just going to have different pictures in your head and the timing and where things are. All right. Now, now the dragon's blowing, you know, fire to the to screen, right? Okay. Well, uh, you know, you're just reacting to nothing. And that's an admirable quality for actors to be able to embody that. But if it's a group of people, it's a lot harder. So yeah, I thought that was also one of my favorite takeaways. Another one, uh, from the, one of those same episodes, I think, uh, is Gina Carano. If you guys don't know Gina Carano, she used to be an MMA fighter. Now she's been in, in movies and TV shows for a number of years now. Like she was in uh, Deadpool 2. And, but she plays kind of this mercenary woman in, uh, in The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. And she was saying, this kind of reminded me of VR. So remember, as they're moving the, the real camera, the background is shifting parallax to adjust to the camera's view. So the only real point of view that's spot on is the camera's point of view. For everybody else, the world is kind of warping around them. Mm -hmm. And that reminded me, like, if you put on a VR headset and the VR headset's not perfectly synced to your, to your movements, you actually get motion sickness. And some people get really nauseated. And she mm -hmm. goes, she goes, yeah, there's a few times where this background's moving. And when it fills your in entire, you know, peripheral vision, you're just like, you know yeah. you start to feel a little bit nauseous and she says she goes yeah I, I i'm a little embarrassed to say but i started to feel a little bit queasy at times so but you're still immersed in that environment another fun takeaway we don't want to ruin the episode but another fun takeaway is they were saying they had cleaned up everything off the set 
and it was just staff people on the screen. They're having a talk, and all of a sudden, someone jumps up, fire, fire! But it was actually an element in the Unreal Engine just streaming, and it looked so real. They thought there was an actual yeah. fire on the set. So I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, Even that was so good. If you're not looking through the camera, it can still completely trick you. And when you see production photos, you're just like, wow, it yeah. looks like they're really, really there. Yeah, it's incredible. I think they did a video for for D23. And they said that they had the set behind them and everyone thought it was like a real set that they built. They had no idea. Oh, really? Just like, How funny. They were just like, you know, talking with the 3D environment behind them and stuff. But you know what gets me excited, John? After seeing the Unreal 5 demo and now being able yeah. to add that to this, like, that's just yeah, so putting crazy. putting them together. And we're going to do a separate video just on Unreal Engine 5, just like from a, from like a filmmaking standpoint. Because obviously mm. for games, it has huge, huge ramifications as well. But for film, I, I think it's even more relevant, the things they're changing in Unreal, because they were talking about just being artist-friendly, not having to optimize your assets. You can just drop mm. in the film quality assets. And for people who are want, not worried about real time, well, I guess you're worried about real time playback, but not interactivity mm. where someone's playing a game mm-hmm. and you can kind of, you know, what's going to happen where it, it's a completely different type of thing. Yeah. So I think it's pretty exciting stuff. You know, I thought it was really cool how they brought George Lucas to the set and then like how George Lucas said, I've been trying to do this. Like the technology's here for the vision he's had this whole time kind of thing. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting because they, they were saying that, yeah, he was always, and obviously, you know, you're always going to get people that give credit to someone just because they're famous, but it seems like people that really do know him, they're like, yeah, he was always about, you know, X amount of years ahead of the curve, or at least trying to project towards that, whether he got to it or not. He's like, yeah, I can never get there. And honestly, guys, if you look up online, I think it was an industrial light and magic demonstration. It looked hundred percent real. This is probably four or five, six years back. They had a scene of, a uh, Luke's hut on Tatooine or mm. Obi-Wan Kenobi's hut on Tatooine, you know, that he lived in. They had R2-D2 and uh, C-3PO standing out there and they had two people motion capturing, which is funny. You think motion capture for R2-D2, but they had people motion capturing those two and they were moving the camera and it looked absolutely completely real. So this has been in the works for a while. And I always wonder like, what technology is this? Mm. When it's going to, when is it going to come down to the end users? But this is the coolest thing to me about this. And this is going to not just the Mandalorian, but so there's a Facebook group just called virtual production and uh, unreal virtual production. And people are starting to find ways to do this for much less. Like it's, you kind of mm-hmm. call it the gorilla, you know, warfare way of doing sure. these things and, you know, just using regular HTC Vive virtual mm-hmm. headsets and, you either strap the controller to your camera, you get what they call the little Vive puck that's yeah. almost like a, a tracker that they use. And you can you can have your camera moving that way. And people are using just regular OLED, which since they have the deep blacks are regular just TV screens. And mm-hmm. they just use it for either front reflections or just back if it's a close-up shot. And some people are digging into using projectors like they used mm-hmm. to use for your projections. So, but the cool thing is, is obviously the Mandalorian is using these huge, huge, sets but it's yeah. starting to trickle down at a much faster rate than typically would happen because it's mostly software based mm-hmm. and unreal engine 4 is free and the tools to do that are free as well it's not like it's proprietary development plugins that, mm-hmm. that they're developing it's all like okay we do it but now it's really super it's really really cool stuff really i mean and times. then i think there's even a quote from george lucas that says one day we're going to be making these movies from our garage because like once the technology gets there, it's just like. But then he didn't he also kind of start making movies in garages with the visual effects stuff. <laughs> I mean, with the yeah, planes and all the warehouses. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the the thing is, you're. I mean, you can do some amazing stuff from home now, especially with Unreal Engine. You don't have to have render farms or cloud render farms, even though obviously those still are going to give you better quality in some yeah. cases, but. You still have to have all the talent. I mean, you have to have the voice acting. You, mm-hmm. you might not have to have a huge movie studio, but you still have to have all the people coming together. But yeah. the, the amount of things you can do with a small team is just, you know, amazingly growing. And yeah. it's something that Nick and I are, are very interested in as well. Like it's really, yes. really fun stuff. It's, it's just a really exciting time to be in this field because yeah. before it was very prohibitive what you could do, whether it was live action or CG stuff. So guys, if you guys want to see some cool and real stuff, subscribe. We already did one cool little hour-long walk cycle in a city check it out (laughs) check it out i dare you guys to find where it loops i dare you (laughs) i don't know where it's at now at this point (laughs) so it's a it's a lo-fi walk cycle that just goes to cool beats and stuff like that and it was really cool because we were able to mess with maya and render it out because i wanted to give it like a 2d flat look and then we were able to put it into an unreal environment 
and the lighting effects, the the plane and all that yeah. stuff. And it rendered in like no time on my little desktop. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's just like compared to like, you know, big studio or yeah, even out yeah. of Maya and stuff and the fan gets going oh, and it sounds like there's a jet weeks, engine in your weeks, house. Yeah. <laughs> and that and that's the fun thing too, is it has a very much 2D look for the character that's walking. Mm-hmm. even though it was rendered in 3d but then you have this 3d background but the lighting interaction is still there it's like a you know it's 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 crazy so you're like almost this is almost roger i mean obviously not roger rabbit as far as you know interaction and complexity it's a walk cycle but it's like you're like wow we did this at home where this yeah. used to be huge studio stuff so just really fun stuff fun music fun animation a cool environment and uh yeah maybe if you guys like that and you want us to if you have requests for different yes. things, we could try and do that stuff. Thank you guys very much for watching. Check out, if you have Disney Plus, check out that Mandalorian episode. I forgot what it was under, but look up Mandalorian visual effects. And it's an episode that they have in, a, in an ongoing series of their stuff that they're doing. But really, real fun stuff. Check out azart.space for all the audio and video links. And we'll see you on the next Azart. Art.